It's that time of year. It's time for Giant Monster Month. You'll begin to notice that many monster movies tend to have similar premises. I mean, there are only so many plausible explanations for walking giants amongst us. One common setup, the remote location untouched for millions of years, makes another appearance today. Unknown Island is a 1948 film about a paleontologist and his fiancée set on rediscovering an island full of dinosaurs. The movie begins in a bar in Malaysia where Ted and Carol, the aforementioned couple, seek out Captain Tarnowski, a gruff captain with a large animal transport ship. After learning that the ship made the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs, a deal is struck. You've never heard of the Millennium Falcon? Tarnowski insists on bringing along a Mr. Fairbanks, who supports Ted's story about the dinosaur island, having experienced it himself. Naturally, Fairbanks is reluctant to join the expedition, and even more reluctant to land on the island, but Carol's pleas cause him to change his mind. Aboard the ship, Tarnowski and his first mate Sanderson quell a rebellion caused by the local crewmen, who are obviously familiar with the island. Later, these same crew are forced to land with the expedition, despite their concerns. Once on the island, the group witnesses Brontosaurus swimming in a lake and a carnivorous four-legged lizard before setting up camp. After the initial encounter, Tarnowski reassures his compatriots that he's brought adequate protection, elephant gums, and a case of grenades. However, soon after, the weapons are put to the test. A stray crewman is attacked by two tyrannosaurs, and our character's bullets do little to stop the assault. Instead, the cruel captain shoots the crewman to put him out of his misery. The mutinous crew returns even more angered and plan another revolt. Later that night, a giant sloth creature visits the camp, only to be scared away at the last minute by the lizard monster from before. This encounter frightens Carol, who convinces Ted to end the expedition. However, the next morning, Tarnowski announces his intentions of capturing a live dinosaur before leaving, basically holding the others captive. The first capture attempt ends in a failure, with a group of tyrannosaurs rushing the group who barely are able to hold them off with grenades. Tarnowski attempts to hold his ground, but the crew attempts to abandon, causing a skirmish that ends in the death of the ship's first mate and another native crew member. This doesn't dampen the captain's hopes, and he begins to construct a defense barrier of fire around the camp. However, his drinking and jungle fever begin to alienate him from the others. So much so that the native crew steals the boat that brought the group to shore. Shortly after, the boat is destroyed on the reefs surrounding the island, marooning the captain, Carol, Ted, Fairbanks, and another officer. Fairbanks, having escaped the island once before, suggests creating a raft to get off the island. Little beknownst to Fairbanks, Tarnowski had another boat ready that he planned on using for himself. Before leaving, he kidnaps Carol and attempts to take her away. As they struggle, another T-Rex appears, which Tarnowski kills with a grenade. The others arrive at the battle site, only to find a dead dinosaur and a missing Carol. Being too dark to search, the group resolves to look for Carol in the morning. However, Fairbanks, who has grown close to Carol, navigates the jungle at night, and locates the pair shortly after dawn. Carol, in the meantime, had stolen Tarnowski's gun, but was forced to use it to kill an attacking lizard monster, causing Tarnowski to take back the gun and Carol's only chance at escape. The gunshots alert Fairbanks to Carol's location, and the two men fight over the girl. Their fight is shortly interrupted by the giant sloth from before, who kills and eats Tarnowski. As Fairbanks and Carol flee, another Tyrannosaurus appears and battles the sloth. The final battle culminates in a great scene where the T-Rex is thrown from the cliff and his empty rubber suit falls to the beach below. The sloth limps away and our heroes are able to return alive. The movie ends with Carol telling Ted that they have some things to talk about as she and Fairbanks look out onto the sea. This movie borrows many plot elements from previous monster movies like Kong and The Lost World. However, 
the standard plot is set apart by the fact that the monsters are so dopey looking. For example, the movie calls the main dinosaur a Tyrannosaurus, but I'm entirely unconvinced. The T-Rex is made up of a guy standing up straight in a saggy rubber suit with a horn on the tip of the nose. The suits are really the highlight of the film. Watching the suit actors awkwardly shuffle towards the camera or try to fight the sloth is hilarious. The sloth is also worth mentioning, mainly because it doesn't look like a sloth. If it weren't for the characters calling the T-Rex a T-Rex and the ape thing a sloth, I wouldn't have any idea what to say in the plot section of the review. I already had to come up with Lizard Monster to describe the other dinosaur in the movie, simply called a thin back lizard. What, couldn't our paleontologist friend call it a bulldog or something? It would be about as close as calling that other thing a sloth. Despite these technical flaws, Unknown Island marked the end of an era. Instead of island adventures in far off lands, monster movies would soon begin to take place in our own backyards. Stay tuned for the next video, when we begin to explore the atomic monsters of the 1950s. In the meantime, curl up with your lizard monster and watch Unknown Island.